Okay, so our first question on this side is, can you tell us a little bit of your high, about high school, the type of student you were, any struggles or bumps or hiccups along the way? Mm, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, as um, as Shani shared at the beginning, um, high school was about ten years ago for me, which is crazy to think about. Um, and it's yeah, it's life happens really fast. Um, but yeah, I would say that in high school, I really started to get my footing academically. Uh, before high school, I really did struggle a lot as a student. Um, I was always kind of known as a student that had potential and that was like, you know, people said I was smart and stuff like that, but I was never able to hone in on that and, and turn that into good grades and good performance and things like that really until high school. Um, and one of the main reasons why is that I didn't feel connected academically to what I was learning. Um, largely because I didn't feel that like my culture and my identity was represented much in what I was learning, um, really K through eight. Um, but I was like incredibly into music and particularly hip hop music. And I actually kind of went through like a independent study, if you will, in English language arts through, through hip hop music, like on my own, where I would, you know, print out lyrics and kind of learn everything that there was to know about um, the way that my favorite artists were putting words together. And eventually that started to serve me as a student in high school. Um, I think I had a lot of mentors as well in high school that really helped, um, you know, kind of synthesize all these different things that I had going on and just brought it in and, and helped guide me. And like, yeah, like I said, I was kind of like a, I had a lot of abilities and skills and things that I had going on, but they were just floating all over the place and mentors helped like put all those together in a way that would allow me to really excel. And then I would say that, um, yeah, so in high school, I was getting my academic footing and also figuring out a lot of who I was as, as a young person as well. I think that um, I've always kind of felt a little different than um, a lot of people. And in high school, I started, it, it's like a really interesting time where, you know, everyone, like, I don't know, for, I, I started to feel more comfortable in the fact that I felt a little different than, than a lot of people. Um, and um, yeah, basically I was kind of building the, without even knowing it, I was like building the foundations of what would eventually become me being an independent entrepreneur, but I didn't know that was ha that's what was happening. Um, so yeah, it was a time of like figuring a lot of stuff out, but I was very fortunate. And I would tell young people to, I mean, having Miss Shani and, and Miss Lori, those are great mentors. I can already tell just based on you all's energy and, and the, you guys are great mentors that, you know, as high schoolers, you should really lean on and um, because they can help see a vision for you maybe that you may not see yet for yourself. So I was fortunate to have those people in high school in addition to building personal confidence and being comfortable with who I was, becoming more comfortable with who I was. So I don't know, like I could talk for so long about all the different elements of who I was in high school. Um, but to sum it up, yeah, shortly, I was a, a guy that was coming into his own and figuring out, becoming more comfortable with being a little different, feeling a little different. Um, and then also I leaned into mentorship and teachers um, that helped guide me through that process. So, yeah, it's interesting. Actually, this is before high school, but I, I actually wrote a letter when I was 11 years old. I wrote a letter that I passed out in my neighborhood where I said that if I passed it out to my neighbor. I said, if you give me $5, I'll go to the grocery store and bring your 
groceries back when I was 11 years old. So I've always kind of wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, but in high school, per okay, here's another thing. So um, I actually, one of the things that makes me me is I have been a basketball player my whole life. And in high school, I actually quit the basketball team my going into my junior year. And it's crazy because from age like two to 15, all I were like most of I spent so much time trying to be a basketball player. And I quit the basketball team because it just hit me that it didn't seem like that was like going to be what I was supposed to do. And I, I bring that up to say that was like one of the first like leaps of faith that I took where I was like, you know, it's like it's real cool to be a basketball player also. And I was like pretty good, too. Like um, I was uh, like when I was a freshman, I was like practicing with varsity and stuff like that. I was supposed to go up to, to varsity and, you know, I, like I was and I'm still decent, you know, <laughs> but the point is. Uh, is like th there was this it's seen as cool to be on the basketball team especially if you're good but I made kind of the independent choice to go on my own path because I didn't feel that it was right for me um and there are also other personal things um that you know as a high schooler and some of the things that other kids were trying maybe and I won't get into too much detail I wasn't trying some of those things um, and those independent choices were laying the building blocks of me becoming an entrepreneur because an entrepreneur is a, lo a, a road less traveled. It's one that not everybody's going to do. It's uh, you kind of have to step outside of the, the, the system a little bit. And that's what it's all about to create a new system. So those were some of the things that were going on for me in high school that were building the, the muscle of what would turn into entrepreneurship later. You know, like the one, the thing about being different or making different choices and is the reason that they're different is because most people are doing the thing that's not different. So it's really hard not to doubt yourself. It's really hard to think like oh wow like you know that this this is there's a reason why there's less people that do this right it's easy to to think that so absolutely doubted myself um and yeah still to this day there's times when I doubt myself but again I would say that um believing in yourself is is extremely important and one of the best ways to start to believe in yourself is to try things um that are a bit different where it's you're like you're kind of like betting on yourself and then uh, more often than not you're gonna actually have success and then you'll be like oh when next time when something challenging comes up you can think back to that thing that you just did and be like oh that worked like me doing something different worked let me try something else different let me you know and then also again like really listening to older uh, people that care about you, um, that have done a lot of the things that you're trying to do is really important as well because that helps you skip steps in the process and avoid potential failure. It, it increases your chances of success, um, you know, uh, because... Uh, yeah, they can tell you about things that they've experienced where it didn't go so well. And you can, yeah, go around some of those um, maybe pitfalls that you otherwise might might experience. Um, so, yeah, I think hopefully that answers that question. So one big thing that I did in high school was a lot of community service. Um, fed homeless regularly, I would say, I think once a week. Um, that was one thing that really kind of just sparked my 
um, just kind of, uh, it sparked this thing within me to give back and, and I loved it. And it was, and that's one thing that helped lead to rhymes with reason. Uh, I would say even again, like, in, in terms of my interest in music and hip hop music, it's something that I, I've been in love with hip hop music since I was seven years old. Um, but even that, my love for hip hop music is like way different than most of my peers, even, even growing up in the sense of like, you know, most, and there's no problem with this at all, but I'm just speaking about my experience. Most, people kind of listen to what's popular that's why it's popular right is like they listen to the stuff that's on the radio or nowadays the stuff that's on tiktok in in my era you know i was that guy that was finding like the unru like the song that was like supposed to be on the album but didn't make it onto the album and like you know knowing every piece of x artist catalog and really being a nerd about it really is what it boils down to. And um, that was like a thing that what helped spark Rhymes with Reason, you know, years later. But again, that was like being different because again, like, I don't know, I liked some of the artists that maybe weren't as cool, like weren't as like, uh, I don't know, maybe weren't as like, you know, didn't have as much of the club records or the the real popular catchy. I like that too, but I was like really into, I don't know if, you know, let's say I was like that 12, 13 year old that was like listening to like most deaf and common and black thought and, um, you know what I mean? And that wasn't necessarily like cool. <laughs> you know, I was like one of the only ones. So it, in, th that I knew of that was doing that. So I embraced that as well. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So when I got to when I got to college, um, I had this idea that I wanted to put my experiences in learning so much from hip hop and benefiting so much educationally from hip hop as a as a youth. Um, I wanted to put my experiences kind of in in a can and in a a, a product that could help the next generation. Um, and when I got there, I had no idea really like, you know, how to take an idea and go from idea to product. But again, I leaned on mentors and asked a lot of questions and said, hey, how do I take this idea that I have and make it into something real? And I that question was especially daunting as well, because I actually don't code. I'm not a, um, I don't have a coding skill set. So I knew I wanted to make something, you know, technological that could reach a lot of people instantaneously, but I didn't have that skill set. So I asked, like, how do I turn this into a product? And how do I make a product if I, like, you know, uh, uh, an app, basically, if I don't know how to code? And I asked that question to some teachers and advisors when I was in college. And they actually directed me to a classmate of mine who was a senior when I was a freshman or a junior when I was a freshman. And that classmate actually showed me how to make a website without coding. There's a website called weebly.com. Um, and also, I don't know if anyone in here has ever heard of Wix, but these are um basically websites where you can build a website without knowing how to code and that day like I went home after he showed me how to use Weebly and I bought a domain name rhymeswithreason.org at the time and um started working on a and it was it wasn't cheap um but it wasn't wildly expensive it was something like, you know, $60 or $70. Um, and I was like, okay, I want to do this. I want, I'm just going to figure this out. And I kept asking more, more questions. And I said, you know, what are the next steps to after like creating a website? Like, what should I do? And they said, 
okay, what's your hypothesis? Like what, what is, when you have this idea, like what is the question that you're trying to answer? And basically what I was trying to answer was like, how can I make a product out of the connection between vocabulary and music lyrics? Um, because again, I had learned so much vocabulary from music lyrics growing up. And I knew that that was kind of the, the, the general like uh, kind of idea around what I was trying to make. So I looked, I started by looking up the top 100 words on the SAT and I found 67 of the top 100 words on the SAT in popular music lyrics. Um, and from there, I started looking at like fourth grade vocabulary and then, uh, you know, eighth grade and then like social studies vocabulary and basically started building an archive of vocabulary terms that also, uh, are featured in like popular existing music lyrics. And that's when like the ball was really rolling on like this rhymes with reason started to like form. Um, and then I got like grant funding after finding that some of that information out. And then that allowed me to go deeper and deeper and start building. So that's kind of, I, hopefully that answered that question, but yeah. Well, another thing in college that that I got exposed to um, that helped trigger the aha moment was the idea of social entrepreneurship. I had never heard that term before I was in college. And when I was in college, that was like a pretty new term as well. That was like a new field, a new term and new field that was like emerging. Um, because before it was just kind of like you you start a nonprofit and there's not really a like a, a category for that. But basically the aha, like in, in connecting it to that, um, to the idea of social entrepreneurship was like that I could do something that like I love hip hop and I love music and then I want to help people with it. And I know that I'm not a rapper <laughs> so like I got exposed to the idea that I could create a product or create something that could take this thing that I love and use it to help people so there was different examples of social entrepreneurs that I met while in college or that I was exposed to and Brown University where I went to college actually had a social entrepreneurship department so there was all kind of different people that had started different ventures that were solving problems creatively you know using their experiences using things that they had loved and yeah and then that first piece of research that I did where I found the 67 out of 100 uh SAT words that was like okay like this this is like I have something to build on here that's like tangible um, that that shows me like there's potential here with this this concept. Negative obstacles, definitely, um, definitely. I mean, it's it's challenging. There's that there's sometimes when, you know, we hit hit walls where it's like you know, we thought something was, we thought a big opportunity was going to happen for us. And, you know, the other person on the end of that opportunity, like, made it sound like something big was going to happen, and then it didn't happen. And that has happened many, many times. And just disappointment, uh, you know, knocking on trying, like, really hard for certain things and getting rejected um, has happened many times. Um, there were certain times where it felt like in terms of money, like I have no idea like how I'm going to be able to afford to keep this thing going. Um, uh, I would say that one thing that's challenging ongoingly is we do business with schools and school districts, and that can be difficult sometimes without getting into too much detail. Um, and, um, yeah, those have been the main, 
the main issues. And then, yeah, just personally, sometimes, you know, like there are ups and downs and you get tested and there's personal challenges that you, you deal with. And, um, you know, so definitely obstacles are what I've learned though. And you have to kind of retrain your, your mind is that like obstacles are when you sign up for the job of being an entrepreneur, like obstacles is on the job. It's like at the top of the job description, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like that's what you're signing up for. That's like, you know, if uh, you are working at a bank and your job every day is to, you know, pull out cash and hand it to people like if you're working as an entrepreneur like one of your jobs every day is to deal with obstacles and and deal with self-doubt and deal with disappointment um so yeah um there's so many reasons why i would say that number one is that i would like for and i plan for my work And for my business to be something that is generationally impactful um, and and that is utilized and felt by millions of people. Um, So I say that to say there's like another level that I, I want for my work to go to. And Harvard is a place that you go to take your work and um to the next level to another level um and i mean the one way to explain that that i've learned already this year there's so many different ways but again i'm big on mentors um but the professors and mentors that i've been exposed to here um and that have i've had the chance to work with here have helped me so much, given me such great advice. And then also have literally like open doors for me already that are helping take my work to the next level. And then also in terms of peers as well, just it, there's like so much like it, um, in terms of like, there's people here that work, I would say work harder than me that wake up in the morning at 3.30 a.m and start their start working at 3 30 a.m and you know they're friends of mine and and it's like I see that level of work ethic and I'm inspired by it you know you're in you're in an environment where iron iron sharpens iron and you can't help but be inspired and want to you know upgrade your your level and be like oh man like maybe you know waking up that early is not for everybody but it's just the idea of like um just this hunger to do your best and to be your best. Um, and then also just, you know, just what I'm learning, I'm applying to like, you know, with one thing about doing work in education is that it, it ideally, it not ideally, it needs to be effective and it needs to actually help people. And it needs to, yeah, it needs to be valuable. And you got to learn how to make your work val- valuable and effective. This is not what I'm doing and no knock on like, you know, no no, um, no shade thrown toward like social media and stuff. But this is not like a social media website that, I, that you know, I've created a social media app. This is something that's supposed to do more than just grab your attention it's it's supposed to teach it's supposed to be effective it's supposed to be valuable to your life um as a learner and and as a yeah as a learner so i'm here to sharpen the it my the ability of my work to be effective and valuable for young people um so that that's uh those are some of the reasons that that I'm here and and I had mentors that really recommended like you should think about the program and I was like should I should I and then I did it and it's like 
I see the I see why it's like it makes a lot of sense. So, um, yeah, some of the best advice. Um, it's funny, my mom always like she's always told me my whole life, and this is a big reason why I think I am where I am. Is she always just says like you never know, like you never know. That's like one of her like like catchphrases, and it's so true. You know, there's like just by showing up, I, I've met celebrities like and 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 things like that like that I've ended up like collaborating with and just by showing up somewhere I didn't even like this is just an example recently so a friend of mine um he actually started an ed tech company as well um this like app for teachers and he was at a conference in California um, he was at a conference in San Diego, California, and that's actually where I'm from, and that's where I was this past summer, and he um, was at this conference in San Diego, and I was coming back from Los Angeles that day, and I was, like, really tired, and he invited me to this conference. I was, like, really tired, and the conference, like, didn't really seem, it, it was it was an education conference, but it, it didn't seem like there was direct, I wasn't like gonna be a, uh, have a booth at the conference. So there was really no like way for me to showcase my work it seemed. And I was like, I don't know if I should go, but I just decided to show up. I was in the, um, I'm in the uh, like lobby and they have a video playing in the lobby and Common and Tiffany Haddish are on the um, monitor. And I'm thinking because of like COVID and stuff, like there's probably no like celebrities that are here. This is like an old video. The way it seemed like it just seemed like an old video. So I'm watching the monitor, just hanging out. I just keep walking and I just open up the door to the ballroom and Common and Tiffany Haddish are just on the stage. And then afterward, uh, I ended up talking to Common and, and meeting him and getting his information and it's that's still in the works to like do something with him but again it's uh if I had not just randomly decided to just show up that day and there's countless other stories like that but one of the most powerful things you can do as as um Ms. Shani said is just just show up and just say yes and you you literally never know like you could there's so many possibilities like you might meet your soulmate you might like you you like there's a million things that could happen if you just show up somewhere so at brown i majored in business um i was going to also double major in education but i would have had to like stay in school longer to do that so i didn't but i majored in business and now at harvard i'm getting my masters in education the big dream i would like for yeah rhymes with reason and i'm gonna say i plan for it i plan for rhymes with reason to um reach millions of of young people um uh, to be one of the like when we think about in 10 years like when when you all are in my shoes and you think back to like when you're in high school or when you're in middle school like oh what was like my favorite program like that I utilize I want it to be that for like generation z um and um eventually one day um I would like to uh I think I want to start some schools for sure I think the first step is writing down your idea <laughs> literally and people overlook that step like actually write it down like actually put it into words whether it's a couple sentences it's a paragraph write it down and make it into a thing that you can describe that's like the most important first step after that um i would do some research a little bit of research to see if it's you know it's been done before and look at how it's been done or, or, or look if it's been done before and if it has been done before you might be able to find a way to do it differently right 
Um, so really study what else is out there and what's related to what you're trying to do and do a little bit of research. And then from there, the, after writing it down and after doing some research that will, and then when you're doing your research, you got to write that down too. You got to write down, you know, what, what you've learned about what you're trying to make and, and, uh, and some specifics. And then after that, um, create the cheapest possible version of your idea. So basically, yeah, it could be something on Instagram. It could be something that you make with, um, I don't know, you, you Photoshop something and that represents your idea, but like a way that your idea can exist where you can show where it's like, yeah, um, a model version or a prototype kind of that that's like really cheap. And I'm talking about this. Ideally, this is less than this will cost you less than a hundred dollars um, to create that cheap version of your idea. Because from there, then you like kind of test that out and and, and let you know let maybe that let some people look at it and, and and people that you trust people that you love um and and then kind of go from there but i would say first three steps <laughs> write it down do some research and then make the cheapest possible version of your idea